Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Out of Context, a pl- your podcast where you can come to listen to about weird things such as how climate change is making spiders bigger. Uh, I am the co-host Ashley Majestic and with me today is the other co-host Adrian. Hello everyone, how are we doing today? Um, I, you know, I, I my wallet's taking a big hit today, and I'm not, I'm not in a good place. But oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh oh, what, uh, what, what did you spend your money on? Oh, I didn't spend my money on anything for me. Well, technically yes, but nothing like I really wanted to spend. Um, I held, I like, booked a flight for my mom, so without some money there. And then with my puppy and my two other dogs, I have some vet appointments coming up and pretty much decided to just pay them all in just one go and paying about $600. And yeah, because the puppy's going to get neutered, he's got to get a baby tooth that never came out pulled. Um, He's going to get microchips, have blood work. My older dog's got a new arthritis medication to try him on. And then my other shepherd is getting his updated vaccinations tomorrow. So yeah, um, I'm loving it. Love having dogs. So great. I can tell. Love it. Sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. But uh, how are you doing? Really no complaints. I mean, it's been a very long work week, but that's neither here nor there. I'm alive and it's pretty much all that matters, so. Oh, well, that's good. So, I mean, now I guess we can finally let her out of the basement. Um, Everyone, we have a returning... Well, no, I'm sorry. She hasn't been part of our context yet. Or no, you have. You were on last week. Last episode. Yes, never mind. We have a returning guest, Sarah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are we uh, doing with our lovely babbling tonight? Shush. I don't. I don't know. It's it's me. I don't know why. I yeah. I don't even know. Uh, but are you serious that uh, spiders are getting bigger? Nope. Spiders are, climate change is making spiders bigger, which is also making a lot of um, reptiles bigger too, um, that like cold blooded ones. So, you know, with the whole global warming thing, regardless if you believe in it or not, with a lot of different environments where some places it's getting, when it's winter, it gets colder, uh, when it's summer, it's getting hotter. So a lot of places around the world that are getting um, more higher in temperature um, that have like snakes and um, and like all the, those type of reptiles that, that love the warm, that's creating them to get grow bigger. So if you guys ever heard of the Titan boa, which is a prehistoric ginormous snake that was like millions of years ago, I couldn't tell you the actual years, but it was pretty much a very long, gigantic snake that if it was craw- if it was slithering past you just flat on the ground, it would probably be up to where your waist is. And so they're really big fucking snake. Oh my that. god. <laughs> and I mean, I put the Titana boa, but I didn't realize it was that big. Oh yeah, it, they, they were big. And the reason why they were big is how the climate was. And they basically kind of got out of, exi- you know, not out of existence, but uh, they went extinct because, um, you know, the big freeze, all that stuff. Uh, from my understanding, at least, I might be a little off with some facts here, but I'm not smart. I don't have a college degree, so get off my back. And so, you know, that's why they they just went extinct because of the climate and everything. Well, now the climate's changing again. So it's creating a lot of animals that should remain small and not a huge threat. They're becoming bigger. Now, of course, in our lifetime, are they going to be like the size of like vehicles and stuff? God, dear God, I hope not, because if I see a spider... <laughs> That's the size of a punch buggy. I am going to take myself out right there and there. I'm not dealing with it. I'm not reliving the movie Eight Legged Freaks. It's not happening for me. It's just no, nope. I no, no. I'm trying to, to work through my spider fear, my arachnophobia. I'm trying to work through it. Uh, but if they're gonna be the size of a freaking house, that's not gonna happen. Nope. Yep, and on top of that, and even if like people are like, oh well, that's why we're gonna be leaving the planet because we get to go to Mars because that's what Elon Musk is working about. No, <laughs> spiders can <laughs> live in space. Spiders can survive in space. Yes, they can. Yeah, so there's no escape besides death. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yours are the spiders. It doesn't really matter at that point. Yeah, pretty much. Um, no, I'm just gonna. I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna look at the spider, and they're like, we're here to rage war and take over the planet. You know that movie, Planet of the Apes? Well, it's Planet of the Arachn Arachnids. I'm like, you know what? It's yours. And then, that's it. Yep. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. It's yours. You can have this planet. You know what? Here's the keys to my house. The keys to my car. Uh, yep. Lock up whenever you're done. I'm out. Fuck that shit. I'm out. Uh huh. Fuck this shit. I'm out. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's just like, mm. yep. I'm gonna pick a nice cliff or a really nice building and just swan dive off of it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Or I could do if anyone here is familiar with Family Guy. You know, Peter Griffin, who's the big <laughs> idiot, is the main character. He decided to do, he was doing stupid shit. So this is another way. It's either going to be suicide or I'm going to be treated as, like, it's going to be the massive respect that I will be, like, royalty, which it's not going to go that way because, like, I did the cartoon. It's going to be I'm going to get killed for and much deserved why. As you go into a neighborhood and you say a really bad word really loud, yeah. That's oh what he did God. in Family Guy. I'm like, oh, that's a quick suicide right there. <laughs> Well, I mean, considering... I mean, not a quick... Like, could be. It could be quick. Who knows? I mean... Generally speaking, if you're saying what I think you're going to say, you might die a very slow death. Oh, so if I just go to a neighborhood and sneeze really loud, I'm going to die a slow death? I mean, that makes sense if I, ha if I get sick and I have a disease, but... You know, I don't think anyone's going to, like... I think people will, like, say, Oh, man, she's really sick. I don't want to take her out. And now I'm on a yeah. date because just look at her sniper rifle, and that's what we, that's what's gonna get done. I don't know what you were thinking, but I was clearly thinking of sneezing. Yeah. Do better. I, Do better. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, considering uh, I was bitten by a brown uh, recluse spider years ago, and there was a humongous hole in the back of my leg about a couple weeks later. I'm really not too keen on spiders. Um, don't like them. I will scream like a little girl with a scant knee if I see one. So this is why I'm kind of quiet because we're having those PTSD, you know, flashbacks of like Vietnam or something with it laying on my bed and feeling this pinch on the back of my leg. And then a week later, a nice old, you know, fleshy hole in the back of my leg. So yeah, I really can't do that anymore. <laughs> no, thank you. So, um, what, so, so what is our topics for today, you know, my lovely people? Conspiracy theories! <laughs> yes, so we did conspiracy theories with the last show, The Root of All Ashley, and we always meant to do conspiracy theories part two. We never got around to it because of uh, scheduling us, especially on me, where I kept delaying recordings because of who I am as a person. So... Of course, one of the first few episodes we had to bring back is conspiracy theories, which hopefully this will be a type of episode that we'll do every so often. So we'll do conspiracy theories. I would like to say like maybe once a month, every other month, we should record a conspiracy theory episode. That sounds good. But uh, yeah, we have yes. we have conspiracy theories going on today. And I mean, the, the, the door is wide open. That There's no limitations. We can talk about conspiracy, like last time conspiracy theories that came true. Cons our favorite ones, regardless if they're super stupid or they actually do make your brain think, uh, to just anything, like, or even your own conspiracy theory. So there's no parameters here. Just go wild. And with our guest who has been wanting to return to do specifically this topic, I am going to let Sarah go first if she's ready. <gasps> I'm so excited. Okay, so... So, um, my first conspiracy theory for today is actually, um, the men in black. Um, so I was listening to a different podcast at work today and yesterday, um, because it's one called scared to death and I just, it sounded interesting and I wanted to try something new. Right. So I'm sitting here listening to it and they're talking about how, um, before the movie Men in Black even came out, this person um, in Australia got abducted by aliens. It's a whole to do. Um, I haven't really heard much about Australian people getting abducted by aliens. Usually it's like crazy American folks 
Um, but this person, she was abducted by alien, apparently out of her living room, and like stuff was all over the place in the living room, and like the window was messed up, and the only other like evidence of anything that happened was that one of the bushes on either side of the window seemed to have extreme heat exposure. Um, and she was gone for about a day or so, not even a day. And she, I think it was less than 24 hours, if I remember correctly. And she came back 500 miles away. Um, so there wasn't even enough time to like book a plane and like get her there and back and things of that nature. Um, because she woke up in the middle of nowhere and someone found her at a petrol station. So at a gas station, they find her in the middle of nowhere. Right. And she had just dyed her hair. I want to say like a couple days ahead of time. And she had shaved her legs that day. Yeah. She shows back up within less than 24 hours after being abducted in a town 500 miles away in the middle of nowhere with at least a few days worth of stubble on her legs, like almost five days worth of stubble, and her just dyed blonde hair has about an inch of uh, growth of like, um, you know, the roots. And she swears that it was aliens that abducted her. She had bruises all over her body. She had um, marks on her legs and on her ankles of all places. And she said that while she was there, she um, was spoken to by a masculine figure that was covered head to toe, told her to be calm and not worry that she was going to be okay. And then she disappeared they just disappeared after saying that they had been approached and confronted by men in black now mind you this is like late 80s early 90s that this happened and these people are saying yeah no these guys in black they confronted us they told us that we need to stop talking about what happened and that um, these people were trying to uh, shut us up and they went running away from them and 20 years later nobody, nobody knows where they are. These people just dropped off the face of the planet the woman and her husband. They're just gone and the last thing anybody heard from them was that they were trying to get away from the men in black. So the question is, is the men in black an actual thing? Like, are aliens an actual thing? And with that being said, if they are, what is happening? Do they live here? Do they, you know, exist here? That's hmm. kind of where I'm at. Hmm. Okay. So I actually, for me, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm one of those people that, yes, I do believe aliens exist because it just boggles my mind where people are like, no, aliens don't. So you mean to tell me, regardless if it's a religious perspective or you look at a scientific perspective or both or none, however you choose to view things, that how expanse this universe is or how powerful God is, again, however you choose to view it, that 
only us on this one planet. We are the only things that exist. We are the only things that God's like, you know what? Here you go. Um, I have this big, huge place, but I'm just going to pick this tiny little speck of dust to have life forms. So, and then of course, if you look at a scientific like perspective is, again, how vast our universe is, to dimensions, to different galaxies, to different, like to thousands, to millions of planets all over the place. And we're the only ones. So I far-fetched and I just, so I fully believe that there's other life out there. So I like, oh man, we can just have an aliens episode, I swear to God. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of things, you know, like they, they view our planet as like, um, like as an exhibit, uh, they use us as a testing facility, like we're, we're just experiments, you know, if you look at back in the past of hieroglyphics of chimeras and things, uh, those were like experiments from aliens and like they got bored of the dinosaurs and they created us and they've liked us so far because we entertain them with our bullshit. So when it comes to the men in black thing people have not been blowing this up our actual government has released actual documents proving that there's been alien activity and sightings and no one's blasted this and then you have world leaders around the world that you know that have said yeah i'm part like we've been part of this and they've been swept under the rug and but it's just the fact is that Anytime things come out, they don't get made to be super big or they get hushed up really quick where people forget about it. So I have no doubt within my mind that there's people that are very well aware of what's going on and where it's at and what's here or what comes visits or both. And they just, you know, it's the men in black thing. So I, I am not surprised if that were to be true at all. And I actually do believe it's true, but you know, again, they, there's a news about announcement and they're like, Hey, men in black is real. I'm like, called it that's my 2023 bingo card <laughs> that's great yeah also the way i see it on my end i mean i think it's pretty arrogant for us to believe that you know we're the only species that's around here in this whole galaxy i mean i believe that we've had people here with us so far you know that's unlike us and there's only a certain amount of things that our little pea brains can handle as far as getting over the fact that it's just us here and that these made up aliens are somewhere else. I believe that the government will only allow us to know what they want us to know, whether it be for our protection, whether it be to cover things up, or whether it be just a, a basic need to know basis. So that's why, you know, you hear of certain people going crazy and spouting all these conspiracy theories, and all of a sudden they're deemed as crazy or out of control or psychotic and stuff of that nature. So I, mean, I just definitely believe that, no, they're here. They're here, they're roaming around with us, they're part of us, they watch us as we watch them, but just, it's all controlled. Mm-hmm, agreed. It's, uh, yeah, we gotta just do an Aliens episode, it's where, because, like, I can go on for years about this thing. It's, uh, oh, me too. Yeah, I mean, even right now, I mean, there's, like, one of the couple conspiracy theories I want to talk about, it kind of relates to that in a way, it kind of goes to two, it kind of branches to two different things honestly because i kind of like both conspiracy theories but i'll get to that here in a bit um but yeah i mean anything else to touch base on that or are we ready for adrian to go next well um i was just gonna say that i 100 percent believe in aliens they freak me the fuck out or don't get me wrong okay because it is extremely arrogant to believe that we're the only intelligent quote-unquote life um in the universe so there's got to be something out there you know it, it's got to be and are they here probably although i genuinely think um that they probably view us in in the way we view bigfoot or um like an experiment or they think that we are like the evil knievel of the universe okay like the dumb shit that we do that we should die from that we don't you know we do dumb stuff for fun, uh, like throwing ourselves out of airplanes, you know, and just stupid things that should kill us on the daily that we just do for fun, you know? So, like, there is a, I, I don't know if it's on Reddit or on Twitter or what, but there's, like, a um, group of people that kind of 
joke that Amer that um, humans are kind of like space cowboys in that, um, like if whenever we get on the level of like Star Trek and we travel amongst the stars, that they're basically going to think that we're freaking psychotic because we do these dumb things for fun, and like say for instance, um, like we do self destructive stuff and we survive all the time. So like say you want to have a human on the team because they'll do whatever they need to do or you'll have a human on the team because they will just eat random foods or you want to have a human on the team because they're reckless and they don't particularly care about their own safety so they'll do the stuff you don't want to do you know or you know we personify freaking Roombas for crying out loud um like put stupid stuff on it so I feel like we are basically and, and I hate to put it this way but like the Australians of space <laughs> like the people that everyone's like oh yeah they're just a little bit weird but it's because they're from this place you know yeah I mean well no I want to think of Australia I would p think of it if you I don't know if you look at Americans perspective where you think oh man this person's weird and it's usually people from like um, that are Danish or Swedish. It's like, I'm like, I'm thinking back to like cartoons and stuff. It's always the weird people that are like very pale and super blonde, and they're like, oh, in my country, we do, would do it this way, and then you're just like, what the fuck? So I don't know. That's just I'm thinking. So the Russians of space. What? So we'd be the Russians of space. We could be the Russians of space. We could. Yeah. Honestly, in Russia, we do this. Yeah, it, it could also be any country that's not America, because here in America, um, as many people will say, is that we are the greatest country, which I do not believe whatsoever. Uh, and yeah, it's a, uh, or there's another way to view it, is that we are the the black sheep of the galaxy of the universe's family. We're the cousin that everyone's afraid to invite to a cookout, and when they do, it, things just get weird. So they slowly just leave us alone. And they just kind of stare at us from afar, just waiting for something, the next thing to happen. I really feel like that's how we're looked at. We're the fuck around and find out. No, we're, we're the, we're, we're the, we just fuck around and never find out. Yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now I guess we're going to move over to me because I have a little bit of radio silence. So I guess I'll pick up the slack a little bit and I'll give uh, one of my uh, conspiracy theories and then we'll move on over to Ashley and see what she has. Now, now I ran across this one uh, while researching for this article and I started uh, laughing a little bit. And bear with me on this one. It sounds a little bit weird, but if you really, really think about it, as weird as it sounds, it might actually be true. Now, I know that uh, Pokemon Go became a huge obsession when it was released and I don't believe for a moment that you know it's being used to track people now if you think about it this way we all have GPS trackings on our phones but some people think that the government decided they need to use the game to track our random movements so if you really think about it with all the cameras on Pokemon Go and a GPS available because that's what they need to find a quote unquote Pokemon you'd think our government's watching us a little bit now, what do you think about that? What do you think about that, uh, dear Ashford? For me, it's like, okay, by all means, even before Pokemon Go, I fully believe, like, the government's been trying us for a long time. That's where it's Snapchat, because facial recognition, and you hear about that conspiracy theory. But it's like, you say they track our random movement. I mean, Pokemon Go was severely random, because you could wind up in the back of someone's yard, um, on top of a building, people, there's a, when Pokemon Go first came out, there were some really wild stories of people getting car accidents or breaking and entry or, you know, trespassing, all this stuff just, so those are like very random. It's not the predictable of, oh, we can see what their everyday uh, movement is like. Well, we'll see where they go in the car a lot. It's, I mean, because we have location trackers in our phone already for just so we can share our location with our with our banking apps, with uh, Google Maps, all this stuff. So I feel like that's more accurate than the Pokemon Go um, conspiracy because it's when you say random movement, I feel like that's a very random movement. 
I mean, if, if you think about it more and more, you know, with the invention of the quote unquote smartphone, it's just another just way just to track what we're doing. If you think about it, if you lose your iPhone, there's a tracker on it to where your iPhone finds you. If you if you and your husband have a phone and you need to find his whereabouts, you can track him, he can track you. So who's to say that anyone else isn't tracking you as well? Just a little, just a little conspiracy theory, something to think about. I mean, you know, Sarah, what do you think about that? I think they definitely are tracking us. I don't think it has anything to do with Pokemon Go per se. I think that people just realized <laughs> that they were being tracked with Pokemon Go because, again, there's nothing in um, Pokemon Go that you can't find by having the right clearance. Um, that's the same as like 23andMe or Ancestry.com. People are like, oh no, they're gonna track you. Well, my darling, the government's already tracking you. They're tracking you in your car because all cars have computer chips in them now. Um, they are tracking you by your phone. They're tracking you by your um, internet usage. They're tracking you by literally everything you do every day. Um, they act like it's such a weird thing too because like in some countries, uh, there are CCTV that they can pull up at any time um, and see where you've been. You can do that in freaking Britain. Um, there are cameras at, at almost every single stoplight. And what do you think those cameras are used for? It's for facial recognition to see if you're a freaking criminal. You know? Like, you are being tracked at all times to see what's going on. So, like, it has nothing to do with Pokemon Go and people thinking, you know, oh, this is just to track me. You're being tracked at all times. That's just part of being alive in today's age that you are being tracked. Like, there's no way you can stop it. You can't go completely off-grid. Not only is that not feasible, um, but it's also horribly illegal and if you want to sit there and you know wear some aluminum foil thinking it's going to help you like it's not going to do anything people that freak out about being tracked just make me giggle because literally every bit of your life you're already being tracked mm -hmm. of course i mean that's just one of my own little you know silly conspiracy theories i have another one but we're going to keep on Keep on moving and go, go around the round table here. So, uh, you know, Ashford, what's yours? I've been really sitting here debating because I have two conspiracy theories I kind of like, but I, I guess I'll stick to the shorter one, um, per se. I think this is a common one, but it's going to kind of go a little bit more, like going more into it. But I'm assuming you both are aware of the conspiracy that Walt Disney's head is frozen underneath Disney World. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so now I, I've been kind of reading into it. So it really started off with um, that they Disney created the movie Frozen as a distraction simply because people think too much about the conspiracy theory and it gets it was becoming more and more popular as the internet's growing and more of a joke and things. So now when you Google Disney Frozen, it comes up to the movie rather than talking about uh, Disney's frozen head. You have to actually type in Walt Disney head frozen underneath Disney for it without it actually mentioning the movie Frozen. And even then, if you look at images, you'll even still see references to the movie Frozen. So it's a pretty cool, it's like a neat marketing kind of type of thing to kind of to drive people away from thinking that. Which a part of me has always believed. I think Disney has just always like, you know, just let people think they what they want because they're gonna want to spend money on us and do all this stuff anyway. To the point that maybe they have new PR people. Things are, you know, technology things are becoming more and more like getting out. At each year passes, we find out dirty secrets from people like if they sneezed in, into their hands and never washed their hands, and uh, to something that happened in the nineteen twenties. Just every day, there's always something like new happening, and so there's different theories how the rumor started. There's you know one I read about where it was a newspaper reporter, but the newspaper I can't where what was the name of it, but it was a very small newspaper company. It was called National Spotlight, where one of the reporters uh, you know allegedly dressed up as. Um, 
one of the what, what do you call them as a I don't want to say ward but not a nurse either but basically someone that would work um and behind the scenes at Disney and like as an orderly so he disguised himself as that he broke into a storage room and saw the deceased body of Walt Disney um in a cryogenic metal cylinder and now where people are thinking oh it's not real because you know this is so long ago and there was a small newspaper company so you can't really even find that article now which is well yeah if you think about disney's a very powerful company they can bury stuff like that easily and the internet wasn't so powerful back then or even 20 years ago that stuff like this could have just been easily wiped or if you really go through uh, google and go to page 52 which let's face it no one here goes past the first page um, you know, they talk about how the cryogenics is buried underneath Pirates of the Caribbean, right? Not buried, but it's located because Disney World, for people that don't know it, is basically built on a second story. Because underneath Disney is, a is like a channel of tunnels for all the cast members and workers travel throughout Disney parks. Because you, it's very rare that you actually see Disney employees travel through the parks like you would see at Universal, SeaWorld. Six Flags, all these things. My mom worked at Disney. She worked there for a few years. And I know other people that worked at Disney. There's a system of tunnels that take you all over the park. And that's how employees get to everywhere. So Disney is built on a second story and no one's aware of that. So it's even more likely that some cryogenic lab is down there because there's places and areas that employees are just not allowed to go even near whatsoever. But you see that everywhere, you know. But there's that. Um, then there's, where's the, the sky at? And the other part is, you know, the closest thing to the hard evidence that he was, that Walt Disney was studying cryogenics. Because people are like, oh, he, it's not like he would know that. He was a cartoonist. He was thinking about drawing a cartoon mouse and all that stuff. What would he know about that scientific thing? Well... You know, Dis so what the article says is that Walt Disney was studying cryogenics um, and this guy, Bob Nelson, who is the former president of the Los Angeles-based Cryogenic Society of California, he gave an interview in 1972 with the Los Angeles Times claiming that Disney wanted to be frozen. Um, and then in a 2013 Los Angeles Magazine interview with the same guy, Bob Nelson, uh, he was asked to elaborate on that claim that he made all those years ago. And Bob, and he said that we, like Bob Nelson says, we got a call from Walt Disney Studios asking us how many people had been frozen and what kind of facilities we had and who the medical staff was. He was a very, like, you know, he goes on talking about how Walt Disney was a very intelligent guy and he was checking all the bases regarding, you know, the facility. And there's, so there's no direct evidence that Walt Disney knew about cryogenics uh, or the fact that freezing people was, you know, a popular thing, but it's definitely possible. And then if you look at it, to add on to the conspiracy, th the final message that Walt Disney, which you can actually find this video, is his final message to the Imagineers at Disney. It's, uh, he's seated at his desk. He does his television broadcast that he did every Sunday and he's making direct eye contact with each colleague as he told them what he expected of their performance in the future and that he would hope to see them soon. So I am like a big huge like fan of this theory. I love this theory that Walt Disney is frozen and he's gonna come back one day and he's gonna be like, what the fuck did you do to my shit? So for me, it's a really interesting conspiracy, especially when I came across this article when I was looking up conspiracy theories a few days ago. And I mean, it's always been a well-known fact, but actually reading more into it, it's kind of neat. And then looking, watching that video and then reading about that interview with the guy, Bob Nelson, I mean, it'd be weird because it's not like this rumor. It's one thing with the internet, they start an internet myth like 10, 15 years ago during MySpace and stuff. But this interview happened in 1972. There really wouldn't be a big reason to say something like that in an interview uh, unless you're a complete troll from back then but if it, now again if this rumor kind of started in the 2000s that's maybe 
a little different, but this interview, the original one, was in 1972, and the guy is still alive to this day. So it's like, you know, it's cool. So, you know, um, thoughts on that, uh, Sarah? Well, um, I've heard the theory. Um, being 1972, it makes me wonder if, you know, they actually had that kind of technology. But it's a theory that has been around for so long and a story that's been around for so long that it it makes you wonder, you know, like, could it be true? Because it's been around for so long that at this point it would just be, you know, a form of misdirection to be like, oh, yeah, no, real, when it really truly is, you know? So it's it's just been around for so long that I can't not kind of get into it. So, I don't know. Do I think Disney's head is actually in underneath Disney? No. Um, do I think it would be a good thing if he came back? Absolutely not. He was a racist piece of shit. So, yeah, no. Um, but the simple fact is that everyone believes it. So, And before I ask Adrian for, uh, Adrian, Adrian for his opinion about this, I just want to follow up. So I get that 1972 or when he died, like in the 60s. Yeah, it's really early. They don't have that kind of technology. But even to this day, cryogenics is still obviously around and being, you know, better conditioned than they were then. But no one is still close to being revived after being frozen. So looking at this way is, you know, when they discover bodies frozen, um, like in Russia, Siberia, all these things. And they're still in pristine condition, not pristine, but we're going back like hundreds of thousands of years and they're still in really great condition. And these are things that have been discovered since the early 1900s at, very, at the very least. So, and now where technology wasn't at its peak in the 60s, but people were already coming up with things, um, ex uh, scientists, you know, trying things, exploring methods. And then of course you have Disney with the technology that they started there with their shows. So I wouldn't be surprised if the rumors there, someone like Walt Disney, racist piece of shit by all means, yes, but the guy was smart in his own, in his own right. And to look up into things like that. So it's very well that I don't, I think it would be more of like his body than his head, honestly. I like the whole, it's just a head, but I would think maybe it's just his body itself that's just completely frozen. And maybe it's been, if it's, if it actually exists, I mean, it's in a better state now because back then they were like oh we're just gonna stuff them in a storage freezer and we'll figure it out later our grandkids will figure it out don't worry about it because yeah. then his granddaughter or great-granddaughter i forgot what her name is but um she like she needed an interview and she completely shot it down she's like nope it's not true i was there at the funeral i remember it well yeah but uh it's a funeral and you know, dead bodies don't really look like the real people, and Imagineers and stuff were really good at making these lifelike things, and Madame Tussauds wax people, so they had that kind of money, so again, it's very interesting, do I 100% believe in it? No, of course not, but I, I want, it's another thing where it's like, you know what, if this just happened tomorrow, and it came out like, yeah, it's been true, and this is all the reason why it's true, I just wouldn't be surprised. I would just be like, I knew it, and then I'd be calling you to tell you to suck it. Um, but besides that, Adrian, thoughts? I know. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it all goes back to that thing of it's better not to know than to know. You know, it's better that sometimes, you know, the government doesn't want us to know particular things because we can't handle it. You know, we can't wrap our head around things that have been, whether it had been, um, um, you know, um, thought about years ago or even done years ago. And then we allegedly stumbled upon it today. Most of these things, like you talked about, the cryogenic freezing was done years ago, more or less as perfected today, probably. But the whole Area 51 um, government giving us the little things we need to know. I mean, I believe that it could be true because if you really think about it, I mean, if it's being told so many times, there has to be some sort of hint to it, you know, a hint of truth to it. You know, if you tell the story about someone, for example, a million and one times, 
and it's the exact same story that your sister told or your brother told, there has to be some sort of hint of truth to it. So do I think he's frozen somewhere? Could be. I don't think so. But just like Sarah said, it wouldn't surprise me. Not at all. Nice. Awesome. I like the yeah, idea. Yeah. It would not surprise me, but at the same time, do I think it actually happened? No. I just really, really want now, because Sarah, you're clearly not on my side with this. I just really want this to be in my 2023 bingo card, and you're going to be the very first person I call. It could be 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm calling and waking you up. If I know your address before that time, I will come to your house at 3.30 in the morning and wake you up and be like, boom, look at it, look at it. <laughs> I mean, you can have my address all you want to, darling, but that don't mean that I'm going to let you in the house at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, I, I wasn't going to ask, but it's nice that you thought that. <laughs> Where are you going to find the spare key? Sure, we could go with that. I have methods. I know things. I know things about things. I know other things about those things. No, I mean, I really, I, I think we have time to actually go around uh, one more time about one other conspiracy that that we have. Um, actually, uh, whose turn is it? Is, this, is Sarah's turn? Yes. It would be my turn, but I think we should go in reverse order this time, just for shits and giggles. Reverse, reverse. Okay, okay so, wait, if we're doing reverse, so I'm just going to go again with my next conspiracy theory? Bring it yeah. on. Oh, okay, awesome. Oh, man, my dog's barking. Um, so, Buzz Aldrin, do we know who that is? Yes. Yes. Okay. Basically, the second man to walk on the moon. Now, there's yeah. been, like, you know, there's been missed uh, conspiracy theories surrounding him about, like, when he went, he did the moon landing, and that the really dark parts of the moon were military bases or aliens. I like the more, I like to think more, it's more of, like, aliens and military bases, um, but... You know, there was a supposed interview that he started talking about these things, and the guy with him kind of shushed him up, but I haven't been able to find that video, so I won't go too much into that. The next one I have, though, because this kind of goes into the conspiracy theory that splits into a couple things. It goes around Antarctica. Right. Antarctica is still a very unknown topic for all of us. For everyone that pretty much knows, they think Antarctica, a big, gigantic frozen tundra that no one goes to besides certain countries with their teams of scientists and no one knows what they do there oh will they study the penguins i don't think so i mean why would you put all these military people to some place that's very unlivable but can still continue to do it for years so things have been found that's been reported um frozen diseases and genetic codes from millions of years that have never seen this light of day so they become unthawed who knows what the repercussions could be there is conspiracy slash like article that i saw quite a few times that a russian scientist was there with a team they dug very they're going digging tunnels going to see how far they can go down what they can find down there what uh, arctic creatures could be in the sea underneath all that ice and this russian scientist you know allegedly said that they found this big huge monster kind of like tentacle kind of monster, uh, like more like a squid kind of thing, I guess. I just remember it saying it's a big monster with tentacles and it killed a lot of them, it killed a lot of the team. And he got, he managed to, you know, him and some other people managed to leave, escape, go back to Russia. And they were all told to be kept quiet, but he was so triggered and traumatized that he's like trying to warn people about it. And it's been kind of hushed up since then. You don't really, I don't see anything about it anymore. Um, I look up articles, there's very few and far in between, like, un versus, you know, a few years ago, when I first read about it, there was a lot of things going on about that subject and that Russian scientist. Now, you don't see it, I can't even figure out what the guy's name is anymore, like, the name of the Russian scientist, where I remember seeing the name back then. So, this brings me back to Buzz Aldrin, where in 2017, I think, uh, somewhere around there, no, 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 um, 20, I don't know. Or somewhere like within 10 years ago. Oh no, yeah, it was 2016. So Buzz Aldrin went to Antarctica. I don't know why he would go there. Dudes from space, why are you going to the frozen tundra? Which is another thing, is why would he be going there if there's really nothing to do there? 
So, um, if you even look it up, you'll see it all over the place. The Buzz Aldrin had to be evacuated from the South Pole due to health concerns. Well, right before that, he had a tweet and it mysteriously disappeared really quick. And allegedly what the picture was is that he tweeted a photograph of a mountain, uh, one of the mountains in Antarctica, and he tweeted, along with that photo, we are all in danger, it is evil itself. And, you know, again, it's just, it's like one of the mountains there. And then the tweet went down immediately. Some conspiracy theorists, like some people grabbed a snapshot of it, and but people like so of course people are gonna say it's fake so it's very weird that he makes a tweet like that and then suddenly he gets evacuated which of course people can chalk up to his age he's an old guy but you know he had to be evacuated immediately he couldn't have been taken care of there at all so because think of this way if he had an emergency situation he had to be evacuated immediately that's still a lot of travel time from antarctica to any remote civilization that could help him medically for what he needed. And if you have people and scientists and bases, you should have that kind of access right there. So again, it just goes back to why would Buzz Aldrin be in Antarctica? He's a space guy. And I get he can do whatever the hell he wants, but no one goes to Antarctica unless they're part of some government thing. They're scientists or whatever. So I thought that was very interesting to read about. And that is pretty interesting because once again, he might have known too much, you know, or he might have said something he shouldn't have said and they quickly nipped it in the bud and filed it under, oh, okay, he's old and crazy and senile, it's time to go home again, grandpa kind of thing. But I mean, that definitely sparks up so much because like I said before, there's a lot of things that we don't know. There's a lot of things we shouldn't know just because the way we are as a human race that if we found out not even 20% of the things that, that the goings on right now, yeah, I think our heads would explode. You know, literally heads would explode because we just freak out. And yeah, I, you know, I think, yeah, I think cause and effect definitely plays in when it comes to him. So that's just my humble opinion. What about you, Sarah? So I 1000% believe that there's something going on with Antarctica. Um, I hadn't heard about him being there. I didn't know he was, but considering that they do in fact have medical um, personnel there, they do in fact have facilities there in case something happens um, and he had to be evacuated for medical is a little bit fishy to me because they do have things there in case you get hurt. You know, it would be irresponsible to have so many important people down there. And let's face it, these scientists that are down there are important people who are doing important research, supposedly. You know, to me, I don't see why they really need to mess with stuff down there. Every time they unearth something down there, it freaks me out because there's a reason why it's not around anymore. You know, like I have heard so many stories of people that are like oh yeah antarctica this and that and what have you like elder gods and shit you never know what's out there but at the same time i 100 percent believe that there's something not right about antarctica um and the fact that the ice has been melting from there and like exposing the mountains and everything like that it makes me nervous because we're not meant to see that stuff. We're not meant to know about that sort of thing. And the fact that the ice is receding and allowing bacteria that's been dead for millions of years to go into the ocean and just like, you know, spread. It's kind of a scary thought for me because that can really mess up the entire ecosystem. But um, I don't think that, you know, you said um, military bases on the moon and stuff like that. I don't think that they have done that yet because they've not been able to figure out how to keep people's bone marrow from deteriorating while out in space. They haven't figured that out yet. Um, Because little known fact, when you are in space in zero gravity, your bone marrow literally deteriorates 
to the point that you, if you spend too much time out there, it's almost like you've got osteoporosis. Like your bones lose their density and you begin to deteriorate. So when they can figure that out, I think, yeah, they will definitely have something like that going on. But till then, I, I don't think they're going to have that because what's the use of a military base if you can no longer function or walk properly without your bones? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, but I 100% believe there's something going on down in Antarctica. I know. And then if you talk of flat earthers, that's, you know, that's where the end of the world is. So uh, that, it goes back, it just kind of goes back to a lot of conspiracy theories. I like, I like the really funny ones. Uh, that's like really stupid, silly, whatever. Um, that, you know, lizard people and what out for, but I actually like reading conspiracy theories where people actually have things to go behind it, whether it's a picture or an article or video. I like to see that because it will make you think like, wow, could that be possible? Then you have naysayers like, no, that's just not real. Everything that is real is what you see in front of your eyes. If you don't see it and it's not in the Bible, it don't exist. So <laughs> I, I like to, it's just, I like it when a, a conspiracy theory has some, some type of base off of it, regardless if it's true or not. Um, maybe it's made up um, theories to go to back it up. But I just, I like the interesting reads about it and makes you think about it. It's like, wow, I didn't know this. And then you search what, like, you know, hey, here's, li here's reasons A, B, and C as to why this conspiracy theory is most likely true. I look up reason B and it's actually something that happened. And I'm like, now I find myself in a wormhole and I come out of my house with a beard, um, my hair down to like the back of my knees. I'm like, what year is it? And, you know, I'm the crazy old lady that should for me. I would give anything to see you with a long beard, but, but that's just me. I would love to do that, I think, next year. So this year for Halloween, I'm going to be Mermaid Man. Uh, but next year, I would like to be, like, have a big old beard. I could be Gandalf, or I could be Jesus. Jesus, I could piss people off that way. Hmm. Yeah, that's anyway. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I guess it's my turn. So I guess I'll, I'll definitely keep it lighthearted a bit here. Now, uh, this comes from the Associated Press um, off of Google. So bear with me. I'm going to try to give the cliff notes here. I'm not going to read too long. Uh, some people notice that, oddly enough, a huge amount of tragedies happen during the month of April, which is my birth month. Go figure. According to these people, April is actually the government's blood sacrifice season. And during the month, the government performs sacrifices to the demon god Baal, B A. B A A L, and then later disguise these sacrifices as tragedies. Thank you. Since many of these tragedies tend to happen around the same time in mid April, even CNN published an article questioning this tragic and unexplainable coincidence. Weirdly enough, mid April has actually been the period of sacrifice throughout many civilizations. You know, used to worship their god of the sun, fertility, by sacrificing humans and fire. Conspiracy theorists believe that this horrible tradition is continued by the government in the form of gunfires, explosions, and death. Which is pretty funny. I mean, in a very bizarre kind of way. Because if, if you really think about it, you know, we have, we deal with over, you know, population and stuff like that in our country and other countries. And the planet itself needs to find a way to control it. So what does the planet do? The planet comes up with diseases. They come up with earthquakes. They come up with natural disasters just to control the population enough to make sure that we don't mess it up, overtake it. A George Carlin joke, you know, the planet is fine. Nothing's wrong with the planet, just the people are fucked. Because when we fuck up enough, the planet goes, goes into defense mode. And they come up with things to take care of us. They kind of weed out you know, the weak and, and weed out the actual population. So that's my little humble conspiracy theory on that. So Ashford, what do you think? Ooh, ooh, okay. So uh, by all means, I fully believe that, you know, the planet fights back and because we're slowly draining it of its resources and just damaging the living shit out of it. And so I fully believe that natural disasters happen as, um, you know, controlling the population. I think so after so many years, events are always going to, are always going to happen. People think it's global warming now. It's um, we're angering God, but this has been going on for hundreds of thousands of years you're literally going all the way back to dinosaurs 
major events have happened throughout human history that a lot of it's even recorded so i completely like be- believe in that well i believe in global warming too but i do like the idea and believe in the idea that the planet's just like go fuck yourselves so and like we're like the little pimples that want to pop in certain areas it's like nope nope but when you're talking about sacrifices and things the the one thing that came to my mind about the government is wouldn't it be funny this could be a conspiracy theory i'm putting my name on it no one else claim it or else i'm gonna sue you no wait i won't sue you because i don't want that attention the government come after me never mind never mind take it um anyway so the government chooses random sacrifices to please the gods or please the earth or the so you know the whole illuminati thing is the conspiracy all on its own the government's part of it it's a whole secret world order then you get all these celebrities throughout time that are very attractive that are super popular and then the most common death is drug overdose because people don't really question drug overdoses there's celebrities there's a lot of pressure there's drugs happening they have the kind of money blah 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 so drug overdose happens everything's fine dandy you know everyone just moves on it's like oh yeah they're rich they party too hard they're dead now that sucks I would like that. That's a conspiracy on its own. What if the government sacrifices really popular celebrities by saying it's drug overdoses to the Illuminati to please the gods? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I stand Can I chime in? On the hill. So I think it's ironic that people are claiming Baal as the god that they're. Um... <laughs> Baal is a. Um... <sighs> Byzantine, like Mediterranean god uh, that's been around. It's like the primordial god. Okay, he is mentioned in the freaking Bible. Okay, um, he he's one of the oldest gods known to man. All right, basically the equivalent of like the all-knowing, all-seeing, all whatever god. Okay, so it, it's it's like Sumerian. It's so old. And um, so it just makes me giggle that they are talking about that. Um, But at the same time, um, you're not wrong that a lot of bad things do happen in the springtime. And yes, the earth does fight back. Like, do you remember when um, COVID first like had everybody locked down and you got to see freaking dolphins coming back to their natural habitat? and like plants coming back and animals coming back and everything that they haven't done in you know millennia centuries what have, what have you because freaking mother nature will fight back she will because she has to or she'll die so like she'll die yes yeah like if our planet dies then we can't survive unless we terraform another planet which mind you terraforming another planet specifically means that you have to kill everything on that planet if there was anything alive to begin with and our idea of what life is is limiting at best because we measure against ourselves not against something that is actually measurable how can you measure life elsewhere against ourselves when we are not the bin be all and end all or carbon-based life how do we know that there's not life form based on other elements and other things? So, like, it's it's just a lot of crazy. But yes, the Earth fights back. Yes, um, there's a lot to that. But the idea of the government sacrificing people, I could believe that. You know, I could believe that because war is known to be extremely profitable and corporations and businesses like when we're at war uh, because they make money off of it so it makes sense because what makes the world go round greed so it makes sense that they would to um uh lost my train of thought it makes sense that they would to try and keep their power so okay yeah no uh, i mean we can man we gotta do more conspiracy theories for sure because this we could just keep going about this it's um 100%. oh yeah it's i mean because you hear about i mean i don't want to look this up we could talk about this in the, maybe the next one 
but you know there's that of like world leaders and really rich powerful men like males only and there's some place in california like way in the forest in the woods and it's very private because i mean it's been confirmed that the past presidents have gone to this thing and it's just people say oh it's just a bunch of old dudes going around just like getting together having a good old time no i really think it's something you know sorcery or um like a new Illuminati bullshit or whatever things that they have going on. It's like their own. It's just weird. That's very super secretive. Uh, you know, again, very powerful people from very powerful families, primarily only the men. They don't allow women in it to even to this day. And it's been proven. They have photographs that even past presidents have been in, have been going to this thing. I don't know what it's called, but I know that this happens. I think it says every year. So I it's mean, called that's the free thing. Thing. It's a what? It's the Freemasons. What you're talking about is the Freemasons. And you have to be an affluent white guy to be part of it. The previous, um, and like this is a legit thing. I know someone whose family is part of it. Um, mm-hmm. You have to be at least somewhat affluent. You have to have old blood in your family, like old, you know, money. And you have to be a man um you have to follow their religious ideals and they're predominantly christian with a twist um but yeah no it's a legit thing it's called the freemasons and the majority of the founding fathers were part of the freemasons which is part of the illuminati i mean the illuminati eye is on the freaking um back of the dollar bill like it, it's it's all connected it's all a thing and it is a lot of mysticism, um, which a lot of people wouldn't want to hear. But yeah, it's a lot of mysticism. It's a lot of like bells and, you know, people think of witchcraft and things of that nature as being so evil and such like that. But what these guys do, oh, buddy, you would be surprised. Like, yes, there's probably sacrifice in there. Like, I'm not allowed to know because I'm not a dude, you know, but like people that are not initiated are not allowed to know things and so i can only know as much as i was told from my friend but um he only knows what he was told by his grandfather and he only knows that because you know his grandfather told him certain things but he can't be part of it because while he is affluent and white he's gay so they don't allow that in there Mm. Now, oh, so I found the name of it. It's called Bohemian Grove. And this is like a oh, fact that? That an event that happens. See, I've never heard of that. Yeah. So I, by all means, I, I don't, I, I, I could believe it's a Freemason's place to meet at, but the location itself is called Bohemian Grove. Um, like there's several articles, but for you, for you to read after, um, I, I'm putting it into our chat right now. Anyone that's listening, just simply look up Bohemian Grove, um, rich white dudes, um, that just simply typing that or rich white dudes meeting in California, uh, conspiracy. It's so, but really Bohemian Grove, that's what's going to get you right to it. And this is, I've read about quite a few times and in the article, there's like a YouTube video of like supposed hidden footage that was taken once there. So I could believe it's definitely free. It could be Freemasons. I, I'm, I'm all down for the Freemasons a conspiracy as well. And but you know it's just it's a really neat uh, other conspiracy. So yeah, 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 man. I just right. I just want to go down the rabbit hole and stay up until four o'clock in the morning reading through into all these conspiracies now. Oh my God! I know. <laughs> so now, Sarah, I think it's your turn. Yeah, absolutely. So what we'll okay. do uh, what we'll do, we'll finish up with with Sarah's, and then we will end out the uh, little episode here with our famous game and a couple other ending points. But Sarah, by all means, the floor is all yours. All righty. Well, mine kind of sort of ties into like a little bit of what we've been talking about, um, and it's a little goofy, but my thought was the conspiracy theory that I wanted to look into was. What if cryptid, you know, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, all of that fun stuff, what if they are the aliens? I like that. Um, 
so where it just kind of goes back to like where my first conspiracy like my first thing that I talked about is or um touching back to yours about the whole aliens thing is I I think I there's an ancient aliens episode that I watched where it's pretty much like think of it as Earth as a zoo per se where yes. they do a bunch of testings and things and they just drop off things like it either works I like to think we're probably the rejects so I would love nothing more that you know the all the cryptids they're just aliens that were like hey this is a fucked up thing we made we're gonna drop it off on this planet and fuck with those people <laughs> that I would not doubt but just my thought was like look what if what if Bigfoot is just an alien you know what if the Loch Ness Monster just got stuck here um you know like you can't help but stop and think of like why would something strange like that be here it could be an ancient ancestor of something else or it could be a freaking alien yeah I mean um now now I want to go back to watching ancient aliens again because this is this is this is chef's kiss so yes yeah i mean uh, it goes around to the, this planet is just on it so there's a lot of things on this planet there's you know you see articles all the time uh creatures of the deep that look like aliens or reptiles that do there's just a bunch of things i mean you could chalk it up to different climates different things around the world but it's just really odd just how different a lot of things are because if you think back to millions of years ago where all of the land on Earth was origi- was originally just one big chunk called Pangea, it's you know so as vast as it was, it's and of course evolution taking place, but it's still very. If you think about how the thousands to millions of different species that this planet holds in different um, climates, different parts from to the sea to the sky, and it just really is like a big. Um, just big pot of weird shit. It's, you know, things that are just completely polar opposites. Things that look slimy, gaily, super furry. Things that, like, why the fuck does this exist? It's just a big, huge mess of so many different things that makes me really wonder. It's like, how is this all existing on one planet? And just originated from this one planet. Yeah, I agree. That was that was. Um, yeah, that was you know that was deep. Nice little silence after that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so, so t- like while we were looking this up, I decided, like since I was typing up the things, I thought, hey, there's a website I haven't been in a long time, Urban Dictionary, and my oh my, God. Pro- my definition for the day is morny, which is the feeling of extreme horniness during times of great emotional pain. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, like uh the like a reference to it says after Uncle Grover died, I got so mourny that I went to a strip club after the funeral. Wow. Yeah. He got so <laughs> mourny. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this oh, man. Okay, um, so do we have time to play the game today or we just we just kinda ran out of time for that? Well I mean Please, I oh. wanna play the game. Well, I mean, it, we have time to play the game. We always have time to play the game. Play the game. Play the game. Play the game. I'm gonna play, play the game. Play the game. Play the game. Play the game. <laughs> All right. The porn. Cue the porn music. Turn it at all. Well, while I'm getting everything set up for the game, so let's go. Let's go around the room here. Um, Ashford, where can they find you if they want to reach out to you? You can find me as Majestic Nerd Lady on Instagram, nowhere else. So if you find me, it's either fake or it's private, and uh, do not pass go. What about you, Sarah? You can find me on Twitter as at Cer- Cerberus Magic. You can find me here um, with you lovely folks. And, of course, uh, if you want to email me and reach out, you can email me at CerberusMagic at gmail.com. Oh, perfect. And of course you can, and of course you can always find us here at walkerac76.podbean.com. That's walkerac76.podbean.com. Find us on over 20 free apps out there, whether it be Spotify, Pandora, Google Podcast, 
or Amazon Prime, we are here, of course, to service you, giggity. Anyhow, so let's get started here. We are going to do three rounds of America's favorite game, America's favorite pastime, just as American as apple pie. Pick the porn, folks. Three rounds, and we can have the option to steal. So say, for example, Sarah gets one wrong. Ashley can make the steal for the point. For those of you who are keeping track at home, Sarah is ahead on points. So Ashley needs to catch up a little bit, folks. Are we ready to, are we ready to play? Your mom. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to start off with... Yes, Vaughn. Hi, Vaughn. Hello, Vaughn. We're going to start off with the, the guest. <clears throat> we shall start off with Sarah. Sarah, are you ready? Cool, very good. We're going to give you three porn titles. You have to tell us which one is the fake porn. Number one, Tits a Wonderful Life. Number two, <laughs> Not the Brady Triple X. And number three, Backdoor Fear Factor. These are all taken from, of course, famous TV shows. So, Sarah, which one is the fake porn? The Brady. Not the Brady's Triple X? Yep. You are incorrect. <laughs> Ashley, would you like to take the steal? All right. What was the first one and the last one? Oh, no, no. The first one's It's a Wonderful Life. The last one, uh, what was that one? Backdoor Fear Factor. It has to be, well, I mean, it, let's just go with It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, Tits a Wonderful Life? Is that, your, is that your answer? Yes. You are incorrect. What the fuck? I knew it after I listened to it again that it was Backdoor Fear Factor. Yep, that is the fake porn. No points on the board. Fear Factor is not sexy. <laughs> You'd be surprised. So, okay. So, so now we're going to go to the next round. And, and now we're going to go on over to Ashley. Ashley, are you ready? Uh, okay. Of course, always fun one. Big Gang Bang Theory, Titanic Orgy, Everybody Does Raymond. Which one is the fake porn? Say the second one. Titanic Orgy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, which one's the fake one? I just said the second one. You are incorrect. Sarah, would you like to take a steal? Can you say them again for me, please? Okay, now, let's see. Uh, Ashley chose Titanic Orgy, which was incorrect. So your choices are Big Gang Bang Theory or Everybody Does Raymond. Um, I'm going to say that... Um, mm, big game, big bang, game, blah, 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 blah. you know what? That one's the fake one because I can't fucking say it. You are correct. Big gang bang theory is the <laughs> fake porn. So now uh, I knew that everybody does Raymond was real, man. <laughs> <laughs> now we go for the third and final round of Pick the Porn. Sarah, are you ready? I am. Am. All right. Number one, Grinding Nemo. Number two, <laughs> Lord of the Anal Rings. And three, By Curious George. Which one is the fake porn? Okay. Okay. So if Lord of the Anal Rings is not one, it needs to be. Um, and Curious George, I believe, is one, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to go with the first one is not. Grinding Nemo is the fake porn? Is that your answer? Yes, that's my answer. You are incorrect. Ashley, would you like to take the steal? Um, what were the other two options again? I've been coughing. My, no, I swallowed my water the wrong way. <laughs> Lord of the Anal Rings and By Curious George. By Curious George. You are incorrect. By Curious George is a real porn. Lord of the Anal Rings is made up. I fully believe that this game is rigged. 
I need to. I, I thought that Lord of the Anal Rings would be real. Well, we don't right now. <laughs> now I need that one to be real because I think it would be hilarious. There it is. It's called Lord of the Anal, of the anal Ring Toss. Oh and my god. god. I think Lord of the Anal Rings. No, you, you looked up Lord of the Anal Ring Toss. I didn't say that. I said Lord of no, the Anal Lord Rings. Lord of the Anal Rings. <laughs> Thank you for playing the home game of Pick the Porn. Next week, we will have another three rounds okay. of Pick the Porns for everyone. Okay. Join up for the home game, folks. So. <laughs> I'm not doing this game anymore. I'm talking over you because this is bullshit. <laughs> no, this, it was the best. You hush. So as the buzzer goes off, that lets us know that we are at the end of our podcast for Out of Context. This is episode three. So before we go, we will go, we'll take it to our guests. Any, any any final words as we close out the show? Um, I don't know. Just uh, watch out for the weird and freaky shit out there, guys. Okay, that's deep. Um, Ashley, anything you have to say before we, uh, before we sign off? Hey, you didn't ask for deep. <laughs> just, I'm just mad. But, you know, I mean, the only other thing, like, so do you guys ever get this, like, I mean, I think, I'm pretty sure you guys do, you guys get the spam calls that every day, it's like, we're calling you because your warranty is expired, or vote now, or, um, solar panels, or, um, um, what do you call it? What's the what's another scam? I, I don't know. Like I'm your dead brother, and I need a million dollars. Like all the scams that people like, not like. It's just a lot of people just pitch. I was like, hey, you want to buy this addition for your house? You can trust me. I'm a legit business, and I want your credit card information right now. So I mean, but again, you guys are aware of the the those scams. Yeah. Calls? Okay, well, have you ever got, like, because I don't know about you guys, but I had one of these not too long ago. I had one of those spam calls, and it's just where someone just sneezed, and then they hung up. And to be honest, I am just sick and tired of these cold calls. Do you know that I get them on my work phone? (laughs) Sarah totally missed that. She totally missed it. What? (laughs) She missed it. (laughs) Good night, everyone. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.